Social Studies Top 5 Podcast by Yanidis Chacon, Sophia Elkins, Shana Cabrera, Julia Schwartz, and Emily Weber. Emily will be doing the Townshed Act of 1767, Yanidis will be doing the Boston Massacre of 1770, Shana will be doing the Gatsby Incident of 1772, and Sophia will be doing the Boston Tea Party of 1773, and finally, Julia will be doing the Treaty of Paris in 1783. The Townshed Acts, a series of acts, were created by Charles Townshed in 1767. The Townshed Acts were laws that required the colonists to pay taxes on glass, lead, paints, paper, and tea imported into the colonies. The Townshed Acts are created to help defray imperial expenses in the colonies. Specifically, the Acts were designed to create more money for England in order to pay governors and military troops. The military troops were located in the colonies and important to maintain control in the colonies for England. The acts also were an attempt by England to eliminate the control of the colonial legislators, which were paying governors' salaries. Many colonists were upset with the new taxation and thought it was an abuse of power. Colonists learned about the Townshed Acts and they started to smuggle products into the colonies to avoid tax. These taxes were applied unfairly in the eyes of the colonists because the colonists did not have representatives in English Parliament respecting their interests. Anger was building toward England in the colonies. As a result of the anger among the colonists toward the Townshed Acts and England colonists began to rebel, leading the revolution, leading to the Revolutionary War. As a result of anger among the colonists toward the Townshed Acts and England, colonists began to rebel, leading to the Revolutionary War. Colonists started trying to avoid paying the taxes, but some significant people like John Jacobson and Samuel Adams started to protest in other important ways. For example, John Jacobson, who helped to have the Stamp Act Congress repealed, was a catalyst for the rebellion. His writings in Pennsylvania Chronicles, which started after the acts were enacted, tried to inspire peaceful resistance. However, Jacobson also suggested to readers that a revolution might be necessary to stop England's unfair taxation. As these writings were published around the colonies, it inspired colonists to consider going to war to resist. The Boston Massacre ignited more flames leading toward the Revolutionary War. The massacre took place on March 5, 1770. The event abrupted when colonists were threatening British troops. The tr British put in a new tax act for the colonists which were unfair to them. The Townshed Acts was a tax that taxed all lead, paper, paint, glass, and tea. The act was to put the colonists in their place after the Boston Tea Party. The aftermath included a trial for the British troops. They had killed five people. Their defense lawyer was the famous John Adams. Three weeks after the event, Paul Revere painted a painting that showed the British slaughtering the colonists. To make it look like the colonists were innocent, he painted no weapons, but rather British troops lined up to viciously attack and kill the colonists. I think he made it more dramatic by adding a dog off its leash. I think he added that in the painting to represent that it was a regular day, with nothing bothering them until the British shot at them. He also adds little details like turning the British faces more sharp while the colonists were soft and innocent. He also included blood and suffering in the colonists' faces. After seeing this propaganda, the colonists sided with the colonists, thinking the British were monsters for massacring the colonists. The colonists were already mad at the British before, so when the British attacked the colonists from self-defense, the colonists got madder at the British. They also must have gotten mad at John Adams, for giving them a fair trial. He was on the colonists' side. He thought the British were being unfair and unrepresentative of the colonists. So, him defending the British was an unpopular thing to do.
The Gatsby incident happened on June 9, 1772 at 5.50 in the morning. HMS Gatsby, a British customs ship, ran around in Rhode Island in Sons of Liberty. People who rebel against the English government attacked and set fire to a ship. This happened because the Town Shed Act said that there was a series of laws which set new import taxes on British goods, including paint, paper, lead, glass, and tea, and used revenues to maintain British troops in America and to pay the salaries of some royal officials who were appointed to look into the American colonies. So they were basically asking the people to pay more than what they actually had to pay. And that made them very mad. And it ended up to the point where they blew up the HMS ship. And that was very important. That was a very important ship to the English because it was sent to enforce maritime trade laws and the collection taxes on good ships for Britain to America. But the main reason they got mad was because they thought that they did not have to pay for the English, but wrong, they did have to pay because they disagreed. They thought that they should sacrifice everything for them, even the money, which led to the Stamped Act. Soon they got fed with it, fed up with it, and did what they had to do. But later they woke as but then they later woke as if nothing happened, like blowing up the boat and there was actually a reward if they found the boat. It was um, 1,000 pounds, 100 pounds. The Gatsby incident is important because it shows that people did what they had to do and people had no hope for anything. Um, it was also important because um, they weren't really allowed to have as much money or they weren't realized or they weren't appreciated as much because they w didn't have enough money. Um, the boat hasn't actually been found yet, and yeah. The Boston Tea Party was an incident that happened on December 16th of 1773 when a group of American colonists from Massachusetts dumped 342 carts of tea into the Boston Harbor in the middle of the night disguised as Mohawk Indians. The reason that all of this happened was because the American colonists were upset with the British because the British wanted to charge the Americans a tax for tea and the Americans never agreed to paying that tax. So in result, they got a group of 116 people to dress up as Indians and sneak onto the boat filled with tea and pour overboard $16,000 worth of tea into Griffin's Wharf in Boston. In result to this situation, the entire harbor smelled poorly due to all of the tea that was being dumped into the water. The British were absolutely infuriated and demanded that the American colonists pay back all damages done with all of the money that all the British lost during that time. Many of the participants during that time actually fled Boston as they were very afraid of what the colonists and British could do to them, as the British had more power than the colonists and could very well arrest them. As for the British, when they found out what happened on January 20th of 1774, they shut down Boston until all of the tea that was thrown into the harbor was fully paid back. The Boston Tea Party Act was the last straw in what soon led to become the American Revolution, which began in Massachusetts on April 19th of 1775, a year later. Soon the Sons of Liberty was created, which was a secret organization that was created to protect the rights of the American colonists and fight against the taxation that the American colonists were getting from the British. The Treaty of Paris ended the Revolutionary War and recognized independence for America. It was settled upon between the United States and Great Britain and was signed on September 3, 1783. The treaty was called the Treaty of Paris because that's where it was first brought upon. For the United States, there was a five-member commission with John Adams, Benjamin Franklin, John Jay, Thomas Jefferson, and Henry Lawrence that negotiated the treaty. However, Lawrence was kept in the Tower of London until the end of the war since he was captured by a British warship and Jefferson couldn't participate in the negotiations since he didn't leave America in time for it. After the American-French victory at Yorktown, which led to the toppling of Lord North's Tory government and the naming of a Whig, the talks began in April 1782 between Lord Rockingham 
as the Prime Minister and Lord Shelburne as the Foreign Minister. Comme de Vergen, the French Foreign Minister, expected the Americans to arrange their diplomatic strategy with the French. However, the Americans followed an independent course since they didn't trust the French attachment. On November 30th, 1782, the preliminary Articles of Peace were signed by Adams, Franklin, J. N. Lawrence for the U.S. and Richard Oswald for Great Britain. On September 3rd, 1783, the final treaty was signed, and in early 1784, it was ratified by the Continental Congress. Why do people rebel? Most people don't want to be controlled or put in place. People want fairness, and if they don't see any fairness, then they will go out of their way and do the opposite. If someone see their rights being controlled or something unfair, they will react by rebelling to make someone see they are willing to fight back. Sometimes people rebel by not following orders, being disrespectful, or misbehavior. In the colonist's case, they misbehaved to get their point across.